Let's open this lube reel on and see how it pours out. Look at that stuff go. Glug, glug, glug. It's pouring out. It doesn't have much of a high viscosity, but it is fairly hefty. And as we see it pouring out, it is a wonderful purplish bluish color coming out. And uh, hmm, what's in this stuff anyway? Let's find out. Welcome back, folks. Mac T here with the next in the series of oil additives. And I have a controversial one. Yes, Lubrilon. Have you guys ever heard of this stuff? You should have because it has been in court cases. It has been part of our lives in the early 80s. And we also heard of it in another name because people were buying this stuff and trying to utilize the secret ingredients. Uh, such as the big, big fiasco of Slick 50. That's right. Luberlon has very close ties to Slick 50, and they ended up going to court on this, and the, the actual designer of the Luberlon, uh, in a way, licensed it out to uh, Slick 50. There's purchases of the companies, but he never actually sold the patent, and things got a little crazy. Uh, they ended up having all sorts of problems. But anyway, uh, Luberlon is in the shelves, uh, I guess, online. I haven't found it anywhere in a shelf for, for per se for sale. But uh, I do have an oil test on it that was done at uh, Blackstone Labs. And I thought maybe we'd check it out. First and foremost, uh, basically they're saying it is permanent engine protection. And it protects from all sorts of things, but holy cow, 12 ounces at $39.95, folks. Yes, I'll tell you how much that costs at the end for a gallon. You can do the math, but holy cow, that's some pricey stuff for 12 ounces. Uh, I think these guys, I think they're selling printer ink at this rate. Holy cow. But anyway, the virgin sample from Lubron doesn't contain very much as far as additives. And the highest reading in calcium was, you know, noted. Uh, silicon, all this stuff. They said the viscosity is basically around the 60W range. That's right. It's a 60 weight oil, which is not the highest that I've tested. So uh, it's actually the lowest so far. And uh, the TBN was nothing spectacular. But the insolubles fell out of suspension in it. So whatever they're putting in this stuff is not mixing well with the oil they're using. In other words, it's not holding in suspension and the additives are sinking to the bottom of the barrel, so to speak. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Do you need to give it a little shake once in a while uh, before you add it? Might need to do that. And two, how will it affect your uh, filter? How big are these particle sizes that uh, we're dealing with? Because if they're over uh, 20 microns in size, then the oil filter is going to catch this stuff before it even gets to the engine. So, uh, yeah, all sorts of things to worry about on this in a way. But we're going to go ahead and cover it. And uh, they say it's permanent engine protection uh, since 1975. Overall performance benefits uh, keeps uh, oil shear, oil loss, additive breakdown, acids, and dry starts. Mm, not so sure. It will improve your compression. Yeah, 60 weight oil, yeah, if it ups the viscosity, I'm sure they have it. More horsepower, folks? Uh, yeah, okay, it didn't do it on a dyno, so I don't know. Fuel mileage increase? Yeah, that's one of their claims. Engine life? Your engine will last longer. How do we tell that? You know, long-term testing, I guess. And cold weather starts are, will improve. Uh, reduces noise? Ah, I don't know, maybe. I didn't test that. Wear, friction, oil consumption. Amp draw is an interesting one. I guess if the engine runs easier, there's less amp draw to power it, but that's that's really an interesting claim. Reduces amp draw. Uh, it will prevent idle overheating if you let your engine idle a lot, and it'll prevent corrosion. Well, I thought all lubrication prevented corrosion, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, last thing you know, you never know. But, again, this is quite a little deal. I did some more searching on here on the Internet, and I was looking up some different uh, statements on different additives and everything else. 
And I thought this popped up pretty thick because they were talking about all additives, uh, not just Luberlon, but uh, they're saying that the Luberlon contains a nylon polymer that will coat your metal parts. Uh, you know, they're, you know, Luberlon is actually saying that something's coating your engine parts. They're saying that. It's adhering and coating now. Uh, the big thing back then with uh, the Slick 50 was that they uh, had all sorts of issues involving Slick 50. So going on to that, let's check out what the court case says. Legal action against Patrolon. That's right. Uh, there was a Don Shriver uh, that was in, invested in this, and John Bishop uh, was the one for the oil chemical uh, Golden Rule Corporation. Uh, basically, it came down to the they wanted the product out of Slick 50. The the trade secret thing they wanted that out. They worked on it, uh, and what was really strange. Uh, this is back in the early 80s in that this thing that you remember Teflon yeah the maker of Teflon is like DuPont or 3M or somebody whoever it was uh, they actually pulled Teflon from all oil companies that's right all these additive companies uh, if you ordered Teflon from them the additive the Teflon uh, you had to say what you're gonna be doing with the Teflon and if they determined that you were going to be putting it as an oil additive, they withdrew the sale. That's right. They would not sell it to you. Well, then all these additive companies like Slick 50 and all the others got together and they sued, you know, DuPont or 3M, whoever it was, and they got approval to buy it, to add it to oil. So they overrode the decision not to sell it. And thus, we ended up with the Teflon, and then later on, we find out through class actions, da 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 guess what? Teflon is gumming up the works. And it's causing problems with the engine pores and, and oil uh, holes and everything else, and now Teflon has pretty much been done for with that as far as an additive. But very controversial court cases going on with this and everything else. And essentially, uh, Luberlon uh, decided to go and do all sorts of things after that. Now, uh, Luberlon, I do check, and I did research, and I went and pulled up all the different references they have, and I just decided to pull up one. Uh, but they got a lot more here. Luberlon says, oh, we got testing. Now, keep in mind, Luberlon was created in 1975. So they started doing testing in the... In, when they came out and they employed various auto sources, uh, colleges, uh, NASA, Department of Energy, DOT, the U.S. Army, all this stuff. But all of these tests, is a, tests in my research were in the early 80s. That's right. What kind of oil were we selling in the early 80s? It wasn't a good oil. And most of the oils used in the early 80s, were they synthetics or were they conventional oils? Conventional oils, because synthetics were outrageously expensive. So all the testing that I found on oils uh, for Luberlon were based on testing on 1980 model year American made front wheel drive vehicles were used in a study for the Department of Energy. Okay? Now, the oils that were used were SAE 30, 30 weight oil, folks. We know that's not a synthetic, that's a conventional oil. Uh, they also state some 520 synthetic and then some mineral graphite oil. Uh, you know, basically, the oils were not very far up on the scale, and I'll show you that here in just a second. But these were 1980s automobiles, four cylinders and uh, basically anything to reduce friction in those things was probably beneficial uh, but they're claiming six percent five percent better fuel economy but at 39.95 five percent better gas mileage is it really worth it think about that you do the math if you only get five percent increase in fuel mileage but it costs you nearly 40 bucks to buy the stuff uh, you know what's your payback what is your payback 
and I'll tell you how you got to use it then you can tell me whether or not it's worth using because the initial output is pretty hefty but anyway going back to what oils and what years if you look at 1971 to 79 SE oil, which is what this was tested with for Luberon and all their testing. I cannot find any recent tests on this. And they're very secretive about what they want to do. But the testing period was seven, you know, that, that model year. Uh, they just started using the uh, SF oil in 1979-80 uh, time frame, but they used the predominantly uh, marketed oil SE. That being said, uh, we're at an SM plus now. We've went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're on our eighth generation s since that time frame, and Luberon does not have any testing that is recently done. So, uh, yeah, it's a hit or miss here, folks. There's nothing that I found in my searches to indicate it, and uh, Luberon is not forthcoming. They say, hey, send us a message. We may err or may not give you information. But everything I did find in their references when they did the case studies were back in the early 80s and nothing was indicated recently. So uh, they're living in the past and the 80s is what, 40 years ago? If you're relying on selling your product on 40 year old uh, you know, oil testing, uh, yeah, you need to bump up your game a little bit folks because this ain't going to cut it. Oil technology has greatly increased. And Luberlon, you're, you're behind the power curve on this one, uh, you know, just, just through your own media. But directions for use. Top off the engine oil by adding a bottle of this Luberlon to full-time engine protection to the engine. Drive normally for at least 1,500 miles before having the oil change. Then add another 12-ounce bottle to the new oil and drive normally until the next scheduled oil change. And after treatment, we recommend you retreat once one time once a year now that's all fine and dandy so i'm going to put out 39.95 twice which is uh, 80 bucks plus tax uh say 85 86 bucks get it put it in my car in the first two oil changes then change the oil and then a year later i add another 40 dollar additive okay now my question is they're not saying it's good for how many miles, okay? So once a year and I add this to my engine oil, and what if I add it to my wife's car? And she drives 6,000 miles in that year, and I add it to my car and I drive 60,000 miles a year. Do I get equal protection in my car? And this direction here says I guess I'm good for the whole year, whether it's six or 60,000 miles in the year that I drive. So, um, you know what? Is it that good that it sticks that good? You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, these claims are outrageous as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, we got to do something better than that. Now, what's in this stuff? I've, I've done the history of it. What's in this stuff? Let's get to the lab test. And the lab test says it has one part of aluminum in it, zero chromium, one part of iron, yeah, some leaching through their processing equipment, I guess. And here's the drum roll. Let's go through it. We have zero copper. We have zero lead. We have zero tin. We have zero molybdenum. We have zero nickel. We have zero manganese. We have zero silver. We have zero titanium. We have zero potassium. We have one part per million boron. We have five parts per million silicon. We have three parts per million sodium. And we have 24 parts per million calcium. Holy cow, the biggest additive they splurged on yet. We have one part per million magnesium, one part per million phosphorus, and one part per million zinc. Holy cow. I guess they could have said, hey, we put zinc in it, just like STP does, right? We got zinc. <laughs> and one, zero parts per million barium. Uh, again, this is a... This is a you know, non-nutritional thing for your engine, essentially. All the mainstays are not there. Now, whatever they're putting in it, that plastic polymer or whatever they're talking about, that may be in there. I'm not saying they do, but hey, other people are saying they're doing it. So I'm just repeating it. It could be a lie. I don't know. But Luberon, if you really want to prove me wrong, tell me what's in it. 
And if you want to fight me on it, then fight me on it, but you're going to have to put up. That's right. You can't fight me on it if you don't tell me what's in it, right? So anyway, that's where we stand on that. Uh, viscosity at uh, SUS viscosity was 177.7. The CST viscosity is 37.75. Again, 40 weight oil we're looking at here. Flashpoint was remarkable. It was 465 degrees Fahrenheit. That's I think that's one of the heaviest flash points I've run across as far as an additive. So I'll give them kudos for that, but gosh knows what's in it. Uh, of course, we have insolubles. Remember I told you that the suspension of the oil for the insolubles was at 0.4. This is the highest insoluble rate I've seen in any oil testing I've done so far. So whatever is in this stuff is sinking to the bottom, folks. you got to shake it up vigorously before you pour it in your engine. And I would not pour it in my engine, but, you know, that's up to you folks. Uh, my engines run perfectly without an additive. Uh, the total base number was 0 0.3. Now, what does this tell us? This tells us when you add this, this 12 ounces is going to dilute your TBN because it adds nothing. It actually takes away. So if you don't pour that 12 ounces of oil in your car and replace it with this, then you're actually diluting the TBN of the oil that you actually had in there, which means it will last less time. So, you know, as far as uh, oxidation and everything else, keeping things clean. So, uh, you know, there's nothing in this oil to tell me anything different. And with a TBN like that, that means that it's diluting it. So there's nothing going for it. But basically, uh, I said it was an expensive additive and at $39.95 per 12 ounce, uh, we're talking $425.87 per gallon. That's right. You heard me right. And you got to use this twice. Remember I said 1,500 miles for an oil change, you add it. Then after you change your oil, you add it again. Then you run your oil change. And then a year later, you add another one. So we're talking $120 within the first year. Are you gaining that much back in fuel savings? extending your life, whatever you're doing, I don't know, but I'm going to say that's a long payback period. Uh, viscosity was essentially a 40 or 60 weight oil. Uh, their deceptive testing claims based on approximately 40 year old testing, uh, they need to bump that up, folks. If you want to have some uh, reality in this world, then Luberon, you need to do your testing to today's standards, okay? Uh, otherwise, you're living in the past, like a historic dinosaur. So, you know, I can't put much credibility in a 40-year-old test. Things change. Uh, what group of oil it is, don't know. I doubt it's uh, anything fantastic, but, uh, you know, there's, there's all sorts of trade secrets, and they're hiding everything there. But uh, the secret additive, if it's that groundbreaking, then why is it not being used in current oil? Why doesn't he sell take his uh, trade secret and market it to everybody. Why aren't they buying it? Why aren't the manufacturers, the oil companies clamoring around Luberon's door say, hey, give it to us. We want to add it to our oil. It's the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, that's not happening, folks. That's not happening. So uh, is it that good? Well, if mainstream economy doesn't take it on and put it as an additive in their oils, then that ought to leave you a big question mark as far as is it any good. It's your choice. It's your engine. Uh, I'm just giving you the information that I've found and uh, had done with testing to tell you whether or not this is a good stuff. Okay? Uh, will it work? Yeah, lots of people say it works. Do they have the data to prove it works? Nah, it's mostly opinions. Uh, so, you know, you take that with a grain of salt, it's just like anything else, recommendations. You can ask recommendations, but if they are actually painted into a corner, say, what proof do you have? What data do you have? Most of the time, they can't come up with anything. So uh, that's what all these additives are, folks, is that's what they are. But Luberon seems to be the most controversial one of the group that I run across. So it's taken longer to explain it. But uh, hey, uh, make sure you like, subscribe, join up Mac T Ford Edge on YouTube. Hit that bell so you know when I put out new videos. And also hit that subscribe button. Watch the videos because that's how I get paid to do this. Do this testing because they are expensive. Hit the PayPal button if you care to donate 
funding to help me with the testing and continue on with more testing. The more money I have for that, the more testing I can do. It's that simple. But uh, with that being said, Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook uh, is the largest Ford Edge Facebook group you're going to find and probably one of the largest active Ford Edge Lincoln MKX groups you're ever going to find. Uh, also being said, uh, MacTGarage.com has the oil test results on it. Go to MacTGarage.com, that web page there, and uh, you can find the oil testing analysis there along with all sorts of other information on Ford Edge Lincoln MKX, parts, and all this other stuff and engine diagnostics, owner's manuals, everything. You could ever think of. Uh, that, that's pretty much it. And uh, not much else to say other than my feet at the floor. Did I have a great day? I want you to have a great day. And uh, Band of One's got some great music. And Mercy Girl's got a couple one-liners for you. And we'll just see you all next time. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos. And remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.